We're back out at the Big Lake once again, and today we're talking about if you use color or lure type to decide what to throw. You're costing yourself bites, and you're costing yourself fish. There's a much better way. Stick around. You don't want to miss this one. And here is this video's featured comment. Congratulations! If you would like to have your chance to have your comment featured in an upcoming video, all you've got to do is leave a comment. And now, on with the video. Welcome back to Lowbrow Fishing, and today we're talking about finding a better way when it comes to bait selection. Something that you can consistently rely on to catch you fish time and time again, regardless of the season, regardless of the conditions. Now, a lot of anglers get caught up in something known as junk fishing. Most anglers I know, that's what they do. They head out to the water and they tie something on and they start throwing it around. Doesn't work, tie something else on, start throwing it around. Doesn't work, tie something else on, throwing it around in the hopes of trying to find something those bass will like. And a lot of times junk fishing can actually be quite liberating. You go out there with a blank slate, who knows what's gonna happen. But most of the time, when I head out to the water, I have a plan. I think about the conditions, the time of year, the water temperature, what's going on, water pressure, uh, where those fish are gonna be set up. And we come to something called a pattern. Now, whenever anglers talk about fishing a pattern, you hear something that the pros talk about all the time. I'm fishing this pattern, I'm fishing that pattern. What are they talking about? What does it mean? Well, it means that they found a sequence or series of things that they've tied together, such as a lure that works with a particular color in a particular instance and situation. Now, what am I talking about? Well, let's just say docks on the edges of creek arms, right? At the very mouth of creek arms, you've got docks that are in deep water and you've got fish that are set up underneath it. They want to eat a jig or a wacky rig or something of that nature. Fishing that all day and catching fish, that would be a pattern. Another example of a pattern would be, let's say for example, there's a bank that has some laydowns on it. The wind is blowing in your face and you've got a spinner bait and it's working for you. You're able to call bass out from the wood to bite your lure and you're catching fish pretty good. That's another example of a pattern. Now, if you can figure that out before you get to the lake, right? You know it's windy, so you know spinnerbait's gonna work. You know it's overcast, so you probably wanna go with a gold blade and maybe some chartreuse or a darker color, especially if the water's got some stain, right? So you know the pattern to work. So rather than junk fishing, we can put ourselves consistently on more fish by knowing when to look, where to look there, and knowing what to throw when we get there. And that's kind of what I'm looking to hit. I'm looking for these gaps along here. That's what I'm looking to, where I'm looking to put my bait. Kerplunk. And hope like crazy they don't get hung on another log again. I don't want to spend the day picking. <clears throat> I got him. Oh, that's a little bitty one, but I got him. Come on, you. Oh, yeah. That's not a little bitty one. Come here, you. A little buck male, but I don't know. He goes, I don't know, pound and a quarter. Nice little fish. Caught him on the fluke. We know that they're back here. So make sure that. Nice little buck male. Beautiful little fish. Thank you, buddy. All right, that's one. So that brings us to the most important aspect of whenever we're working a bait or presentation. It's not the lure type and it's not the color. And that is the retrieve. How can we make that piece of plastic and metal enticing to a fish? I mean, that's what we're trying to do, right? We're trying to fake them out. We're trying to convince them that this thing, which in a lot of instances doesn't even look like anything that's real or everything, anything that exists, and we're trying to get them to bite it as hard as they can to swallow it, to eat it or whatever, so we can catch them. So we have to do this in such a way so it looks realistic to them. And a lot of anglers really miss out when it comes to the retrieve. They'll chuck and they'll whine, 
or they may start and stop, have a little bit of pause here and there, but either they get too impatient with it or they just don't do it the way it should be done. And they could be dragging it right over fish's head and you would never even know because, well, those fish are not going to be interested in something they're not going to be interested in. So you have to focus on maximizing your presentations. Isolate patterns, find out what's worked based on bass behavior, based on the time of year, the conditions, the wind, the weather, whatever. Use that before you even go to pick out the spots you're going to fish. And then once you get there, and remember, the number one thing about the presentations you make is how you make them. It doesn't matter how fast or how slow you do it. As I showed in a video recently, I tend to work fast. I tend to cover water pretty fast, especially when I'm in a boat. I make a presentation, I reel it in. Cast someplace else, make a presentation, and I'm reeling it in. We've talked about this quite a bit recently. And why am I doing that? Well, I'm covering water and I'm working the pattern. If a bass is not there, then the bass is not there. There's no point in me dangling a lure in empty water. That's not going to do me any good. So we're working the pattern. And it's possible for patterns to change during the day. Let's say cloudy day, sun comes out. Now we've got sunny skies and the wind calms down. Well, what's the pattern then? Well, we know that bass, especially if it's warm out, well, they're going to try to seek cover. They're going to try to seek shade. So either they're going to go deep or they're gonna go try to find some shade. So you know, based on that, that's gonna be the first key to your pattern. Okay, when they go to shade, what are they gonna do? What do they like? Well, chances are they're gonna be up under brush, they're gonna be up under docks. So you're gonna to have to go in there, you're gonna to have to go in there after them. So you're gonna to have to have the tool for the job, right? It's like when you take your vehicle to the mechanic shop, when you take your truck in, most anglers have trucks, I've got a truck, you probably have a truck as well, but whenever you take your truck to get it worked on, you trust that that mechanic has the proper tools. If he comes out with a blowtorch and a hammer to do an oil change, you know you're gonna need a different mechanic, right? So that's the same way with fishing. You've gotta have the right tools for the job. And it's not just the lure, and it's not just the lure color, but it goes with the line, it goes with the type of rod and reel combo you have it on, and it certainly goes with the way that you are presenting. So you can't take any piece of that puzzle for granted. And I notice a lot of anglers, they're, I just want to tie this on. This is what I want to fish. I just want to use this color. Mostly, they put too much emphasis and importance on color. Stop worrying about color. Color is not nearly as important as you think it is. I throw cockamamie colors all the time. I'm throwing electric blue. I'm throwing oranges. I'm throwing reds. I'm throwing perfectly clear baits. I'm catching fish. I do not care about matching the hatch. I can't ever see where I ever will. I'm worrying about is that bait standing out and look enticing to the fish. Other than that, I don't care. I do not want something that blends into the background. I rarely, if ever, throw green pumpkin. I rarely, if ever, throw watermelon red. I throw darker colors, but the point is, I'm working a presentation, I'm working a pattern. And for me, color is a part of that pattern to a degree, but it's not the defining part. For me, the conditions where those bass are set up and how can I get to those bass and how can I present it in such a way to look enticing to them, to look lifelike to them, to get them to strike it. Trying to tell me I lost that. I did not get that on camera, but I got him, you know, because I didn't have my camera on. Got that dude on the wacky rig. I need to, uh, I need to get the pliers because he had it pretty good. He wasn't going anywhere. Little buck male. Little buck male here. Let's go ahead and get, I mean, just first cast. Nice little fish, right? Just over a pound, mm, right at a pound, maybe just north of a pound, but, you know, there he goes, beautiful. And that's what we mean when we say fishing a pattern. You have found something that works and you can repeat this all over the lake over and over and over again. And finding patterns and isolating those patterns and being able to successfully work them that is going to trump junk fishing anytime and you'll find that you're able much more able to put yourself consistently on fish and not just little dinks but bigger and bigger fish because you're going to understand oh this is what those bass are doing fishing patterns is so keyed and tied into bass patterns and behavior you can't 
fish patterns if you don't understand bass patterns and behavior. You've heard me talk about it before. You're not going to get away from understanding bass behavior. If you want to be a successful angler, if you want to catch fish, which is why I'm out here on the water. I'm not here to enjoy the day. I'm here to catch fish, right? So if you want to do that, you've got to understand bass behaviors so you can understand how to put together a pattern. And once you understand what a pattern is and how to put it together consistently, well, you'll be able to catch fish every single time you go out. And I watch other anglers when I come out to the water. Now, I've got my dinky little boat with me, right? It's a 10-foot piece of plastic. I throw it in the back of my truck. I'm motoring around with a car battery and a little 30-pound uh, thrust trolling motor, right? And yet, I'm catching fish, and I'm watching these other guys not doing it because they're throwing things they want to throw. They're throwing spinner baits out in the middle of these creek arms. There's no fish out there in the middle of those creek arms. The fish are up under the brush, and so they're not catching anything. You've got to do what the fish want you to do. So that's the biggest takeaway I can give you today. Learn how to fish patterns. Learn how to isolate what those patterns are. Before you head out to the lake, think about what time of year, what are those bass going to be doing? Where are they going to be at? And once you understand that, you say, okay, now that I have a good idea where they're gonna be set up, what are some of the things that I can do to attract those fish? If they're gonna be under brush, well, you fish jigs, you fish worms, you fish whatever. If they're gonna be out deep, well, you can fish drop shots, you can fish swim baits, you can get out there with a deep diving crank, but you've got to fish on the fish's terms. Otherwise, you're just gonna get skunked every single time and that's not gonna be fun for anyone. So there you have it. Learning how to successfully put together a pattern will trump picking a bait and picking a color 10 times out of 10. Once you learn how to recognize a pattern, you'll consistently catch fish. But the best way to be able to pick out a pattern and find a pattern is to understand fish behavior. That's the key to everything. So don't worry about the lure color and don't worry about the lure type. Worry about what those bass want. Find that, find that pattern, and then everything will take care of itself. Thanks for watching Lowbrow Fishing. We'll catch you in the next one.